favorite type of bread. <laughs> oh, Lord. Again. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are well. Today we're doing a really exciting video. We're doing my 3K Q&A. <gasps> so excited. <laughs> I cannot believe that we are already at 3k, it is just mind-bogglingly crazy to me and I'm so thankful to all of you who are here and who watch my videos and who interact with me. I have found such a home on booktube that I like have never really experienced before and I'm happier than I've ever been being on here so I just owe, I owe this a lot and, I, and I'm so thankful every day for the role that this plays in my life. And like we're already at 3.3k so it's gone really quick recently and yeah, I'm just super super thankful for everything that has been happening. I got you guys to send in some questions, I said they could be bookish or personal. I think the last time I did a QA, and a I separated them by bookish and personal but I, to be honest I can't be asked. <laughs> I'm not we've joining just, in. I'm we've not just given you three. Come on. No, I don't want to do it anymore. I've changed my mind. I'm just gonna choose whatever questions I want to answer. To be honest, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna separate them. So we're gonna have a mix. We have a mix of bookish and personal. Okay. So Ali has asked a few questions. The most beautiful book you own? For me, I think the most beautiful, like to me, the most beautiful book is *The Star of the Sea* by Anne Morganson. I love this book, and I love the spine. I love the back. I love the front, and I also really, really love the inside. Frankly, I think it's selfish for it to have a brilliant front, back spine and inside. I just love the sprayed edges with the symbols on it. Everything about this is beautiful. So that's probably the most beautiful book. Which cat is your favourite? I don't really have a favourite. <laughs> I can't have a favourite. Tom's favourite is definitely Rora. Actually, that reminds me, I shot her in the cupboard. Miko, when we first got him, when he was a kitten like a year ago, I was the only one in the house a lot of the time because people were out at work or school, whereas I was back from uni. And so we bonded a lot and I was like his mum and he always cuddled me. And then I went away to uni and he's like, you don't like me no more. He's like, bitch, you betrayed me. But he's kind of like in an awkward, rebellious teenage phase. He doesn't like being hugged ever. He wants to stay out until like five in the morning. A popular book you don't get the hype for. I should have prepared answers to this because I'm just, editing me is going to be fed up because I'm going to be standing here for like two minutes trying to think. It's going to be so bad. Okay. I never read The Hunger Games and The Hunger Games stand, so when everyone was talking about The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes, I wasn't really with it. <laughs> I didn't really feel it. I'd say probably that one, just because I didn't like The Hunger Games, and so, not, not that I didn't like it, but I, I just didn't read it. I think, no, I tell you what, I think I started The Hunger Games and I DNF'd it when I was like 13. What is your take on the highly contested debate of pineapple on pizza? No, 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 no. Disgusting! Okay, here's the thing. I always liked maybe like meaty pizzas or like with peppers on or whatever. That was always me. And then about three years ago, me and Tom went to Milan on our first like solo holiday together ever. And all we did was eat pizza the whole five days. I'm not kidding you. Like one day it was breakfast, lunch and dinner. I actually had one meal that wasn't pizza that entire time. I don't... I... N we didn't say that, uh, no, but it it looks an awful lot like that, it doesn't, does, it? doesn't it? I can't eat anything other than margarita pizza now. Like anything, and it has to be good margarita pizza. Anything else just doesn't sit right with me. So if I'm going to a pizza place, it has to be just plain margarita. And I like thin Italian pizza. But if I'm buying, <laughs> so this is like exposing me. If I'm buying Pizza Hut or Domino's, I still will get margarita, but usually I'll get the classic. Because like, if you're getting Pizza Hut or Domino's, you're not looking for great pizza, you're looking for shitty pizza. And so I like the thicker crust. But if I'm trying to have good pizza, it has to be thin. It has to be thin. Or <laughs> deep dish. I love deep dish pizza. And every time I go to Florida, I love Uno's. If you have Uno's near you, I'm very jealous because if I could eat there every day, I would. Oh my God, thinking about Uno's, it's... Mm. Has there been a challenge on BookTube that you didn't predict when you first started? I think there is definitely a challenge with making sure reading doesn't become something I have to do, like work. There are times where I have to read these books to get the video out and I just force myself through the books when they're books I've been excited for for a long time. That's kind of happening to me this week. I'm just struggling to read, but these are books I'm so excited for. 
Um, but I'm still enjoying the experience, but I think if I didn't have a booktube channel, I would just be reading them slower. So that's a challenge, like trying to make sure that it's still enjoyable. I think it always will be, but just trying really hard to make sure that it doesn't become a chore. A few people, Hannah asked, do you have any song recommendations? I feel like you have really good music taste for some reason. And I think Jess asked on Instagram, favorite band or song? I don't really listen to music <laughs> anymore. I don't know, I think the times when I'm walking somewhere or something that I would have listened to music, I listen to audiobooks now. I just think music's kind of phased out of my life. Two bands I don't think that are that popular are Mariana's Trench, but don't listen to their new album because it's not as good. Like, only listen to that album if you like the rest of their stuff. They do really immersive stuff. They have one album that, like, plays continuously the whole through, so all songs link up to each other, which is so cool. And I just love, I love their long songs. The start of end of I think almost every album, they have like these seven minute songs, which is just incredible. And then a newer one that um, has been gaining a lot of popularity recently, I love AJR. I've loved them for a couple years and I think they're brilliant. They're these three brothers and they play like kind of like electronic pop, cheesy, but it's got like 1920s influences as well. I just really love it. I think they're great and I like when they experiment with stuff and they also... What I really like of those bands is that it's not just all love songs or breakup songs. Especially AJR, write about really specific stuff in life. They have a song called Don't Throw Out My Legos, which is about like not wanting to grow up and that feeling of like still wanting to have your childhood home preserved so that you can come back to it when you want, but also wanting to move out and grow up. A lot of people are asking me, what's a popular book series you'll never read, a popular author you'll never read from? I think it's probably I'll never read The Hunger Games. I'm trying to think of other series. I don't think I'll ever read, um, Oh, what's it called? Oh, I remember, um, I remember, um. <laughs> There's like the one, the betrothed, that series. That's bad that I can't remember that. By Kira Cass, isn't it? I just can't remember the, the the name of the first book. But that series, evidently, if I don't know the, word, the name of it, I probably will never read it. Foxhole Court, never reading that. Never, <laughs> never reading that. Okay, Esme says, favorite series you've ever watched on Netflix, Haunting of Hill House, go watch it. I cannot wait for the next series of that. Incredible, there's a episode where I think it only has four cuts in it. So it's like an hour long episode and they only cut the camera four times. I love it, it's, oh, it's the best series. I'm not a big scare person, but Haunting of Hill House just gets me. The ending, I sob at all the time. It's the kind of thing that I lie in bed sometimes at night, Tom's asleep and I'm like, I just need to cry. So I put on the ending of Haunting of Hill House and straight away, dream place to travel. I really wanna go to Japan, but it's the kind of thing that I don't see myself doing for like at least five or six years because I wanna do it really, really well. I wanna have money. That's never gonna happen, ever, 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 Tiffany, ever, ever, ever in a million years, ever, 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 ever. Nikki asks, are you watching Drag Race All Stars 5 and who's your favourite queen? I am watching it. I, okay, this is the team. This is the team. This is the team. This is the team. I haven't watched the second half of the British Drag Race and I haven't watched season 12. Girl. Because me and Tom, we watch it together and we just kind of fell out of love with it. It began to just feel kind of forced, if that makes sense. Like the show was just churning too much out and it just felt very staged. But All Stars 5 had a lot of my favorite queens in it. So I was like, Tom, we're watching it. I don't give a f I don't, I don't care. I don't care about watching it. So I forced him to watch it because it doesn't feel right watching it on my own. Favorite queens are Shay, obviously. Shay should win. Like that is common knowledge. And Alexis Mateo. Miss Alexis Mateo made me fall in love with the show back in the day. I adore her. <laughs> what is one book you've been meaning to read for years, but chances are you'll never read it? I don't know about never read. I don't have, I don't let myself accept that. I don't accept, I don't entertain that possibility. I'm not having it. I'm not liking it. I'm not featuring it. Any of it. But books I think that will take me years and years and years to get around to are A Little Life. Like that will be ages until I read that because it's so big. I'm really intimidated by it. And Station Eleven. I feel like it will take me years and years to get to Station Eleven. I think I'll read her newer one, Glass Hotel, right when it comes out and then it'll take me forever to get to Station Eleven. What's a very specific niche thing in a book that makes you instantly love it? Mixed media formats, love that. This isn't very niche, but I love my murder mysteries and thrillers to be closed circle isolated mysteries. So what that means is like, you have a cast of characters, they're stuck somewhere and the whole book plays out in that scenario. I love it, I love it. I love it. 
I love it and it gives me that buzz. It's It feeds exactly what I want to do. I know it's kind of basic. I know it's very Agatha Christie back in the day. As soon as I find out something is that, I have to read it. So if you have any recommendations, please let a gal know. Nicole asks, is there a book slash fandom you feel bitter slash sad about missing the fandom of? Although I don't know if I ever want to read her books, specifically the older books, I do feel kind of bad that I don't love Cassandra Clare's books. Like I love how everyone loves those books and everyone knows all the stuff about them, but I, I've never read them. In fact, I think I have read the first book or I DNF'd it, similar to The Hunger Games. <laughs> I was very, I was very harsh with my reads when I was like 12 or 13 because I just got them out of the library. So I didn't own them. And so I was just like reading the first three chapters and just chucking them away. And also Sarah Jane Mass's books, both of those women, women women i wish that i had those references that everyone else has favorite character in the lumine series definitely ella ella is superior if your cats were pokemon what would they be okay okay this is easy this is easy this is easy so lux would be luxio because he's named after the pokemon tom <laughs> me and tom had been together maybe four months when we got the cats when my family got the cats and we just let him name them <laughs> So he named Lux after the Pokemon Luxio. So I think on like his vet, I was gonna say on his birth certificate, no. But on like Lux's vet thing, it's Luxio. Rora is Umbreon, cause they look so similar. I named an Umbreon after her in one of my playthroughs. She just got like, dark vibes. Rora is very vicious, very harsh. She's a dark Pokemon for sure and she's Umbreon. I need help with Miko, so I'm gonna call Tom. Well, we got to talk about how he always wants to be outside. He does always he wanna be, be outside. Under the decking. Under the decking. He hates to be picked up. I feel like maybe he's... Wait, he's Sobble. He's Sobble, yeah. He's Sobble. I named Sobble after him. Okay, you can go then. If you could only recommend one book for the rest of the year, what would it be? I think I have to say the guest list, if we're honest with ourselves. But also Middle Game. Middle Game, I feel like the guest list is a much more accessible book. I don't think everyone will love Middle Game. What are you majoring in? Are you sure you want to pursue it, Major, or do you regret it? She's not going to go there. I'm majoring in journalism, or like my degree is journalism. It's a bit different in the UK. I, I don't know if I want to pursue journalism anymore. I love the idea of journalism. The reason I wanted to take it and I wanted to go into it was to tell the stories of those people whose stories aren't heard enough, you know? But I've kind of fallen out of love with it a little bit. I think that in terms of the life I want to have, I'm a very family oriented person. I don't want my job to rule my life. And I think if I wanted to be as successful as I would want to be in journalism, I would just like, it would be all that I was, you know? And I think not drink, I don't drink. I don't know if people know that, but I don't drink. So like the drinks culture around journalism, I know that shouldn't scare me away, but I've just fallen out of love with it a little bit. And so I don't know if I still want to pursue journalism. I also think uni is a scam. Uni is a scam in the UK. I think everywhere really, but you have to do it really to get the good jobs. I feel, <laughs> this is no disrespect to my lecturers. I love my lecturers and I think they've done a brilliant job, but I think just the, the system of uni as a whole is broken. I think the culture at unis as like from the top down is broken. And once you get in the door, you're paying. You know, you're paying them 28 grand or whatever. So like, it doesn't really matter to them how great your experience is. But I think I've learned more doing my YouTube channel than I have in my two years at uni. It fucking stinks. It stinks. <sighs> Favorite type of bread? <laughs> oh Lord. Again, a fucking again. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Ciabatta. Ciabatta is a great, versatile bread you can use it with anything and it's so airy and yet so crispy ciabatta ciabatta best bread anyone who says different may have a point because all bread is good but like honest if we're honest nikki says she needs a good one direction fandom day story oh okay okay i have one so when they when they were first popular i was like in year seven i was 11 years old i think and we all remember the whole larry debacle between Louis and Harry where everyone thought they were dating. I was watching a video. It was an interview I think they did with like Shout magazine or like something. One of their first interviews they ever did. I, I can't remember which way around it is, but one of them says to the other, can I give you a blowjob? <laughs> Ew, that was rude and weird. And as a, at 11, I didn't know what a blowjob was. I had no idea. And so I went to my friend who was very worldly educated at that age. She, she knew a lot. <laughs> And so in the middle of science class, I just turned to her and I went, what's a blowjob? <laughs> My teacher looked at me. I was like, 
But I just didn't, I just didn't think it would be anything dirty because they were friends. So what's the first novel you fell in love with? Twilight. <laughs> I know it's problematic and I know Twilight ain't great, but I loved Twilight. I loved it. I thought it was God's gift to the world. But like, be aware of its flaws, be aware of its problematicness. I know it's not great, but for year four, me. So what was I? Eight? Nine? <laughs> loved it. Security! Can you please escort this lady over here out? How has creating a channel changed, impacted your life and reading habits? I definitely read more just because I have to. <laughs> I don't really have a choice. You know, I spend like two days of my week editing. It takes me a whole day to edit, but I love that. I love it. Booktube and doing my channel has made me so happy because I'm definitely someone who likes to be busy, but like I don't make myself busy that often if that makes sense. So having something that constantly I'm working towards, constantly I'm improving, constantly I'm trying to like be better and like create better stuff, it has done wonders for my mental health and I'm like the happiest I've been. Okay, and then this will be the last question because it's kind of like future facing. If you could ever write a book, what would it be about? Now, I do want to write, but I I don't know what it would be about. I don't even know what genre it would be in and I'm trying to figure that out. I think it would either be fantasy, mystery thriller, or fabulism kind of thing. So I do want to use this summer to like figure out what are those obviously you can write in more genres than one if you want to as an author but I don't know what my writing favors best so I want to explore that so yeah that was my 3k q and A. I I hope it was fun I it just feels a bit like a whirlwind I don't even know what I've answered I don't know what I've said make sure you click the bell down below because we've got a really exciting vlog coming out this weekend if I read in time <laughs> if I read all the books I need to read in time thank you for all your support as always and I will see you very very soon bye